Welcome back everyone. Moving on to the next question. We got to take these two lines here, find where they're going to intersect, and we got to find that point of intersection using substitution, and then we got to verify our solution. So we got 2x plus 3y equals 9. Then we got 3x minus 2y equals 7. Now, as I've shown in previous examples with substitution, first thing I like to look at is, is there any variable that's by itself that has a 1 in front? And notice that here we have a 2, 3, 3, and 2. So nothing by itself that we can isolate for. So we're going to have to end up isolating for some kind of variable. And it actually doesn't matter which one you isolate for. The final solution that you get should be the same. However, what I personally like to look for is when I isolate, having the least amount of fractions as possible. So notice if I take, if I isolate for this x here and divide everything by 2, Notice we'll have a fraction here, we'll have a fraction here. But notice if I divide everything by 3, we'll have a fraction here, but then 9 divided by 3, that smoothly divides into 3. And then over here, if I divide by 3, fraction, fraction. If I divide by 2, this would be a fraction, this would be a fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this line, that first line, and I'm going to isolate for this y. So I'm going to bring the 2x over. It's going to become minus 2x, and then I'm going to divide everything by 3. So we would end up having y equals 9 divided by 3, as I mentioned, is 3. And then this would be um, 2x, minus 2x over 3. Or another way you could write is minus 2 over 3x. I'll just write it like this for now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this expression. Remember, this is still the first line. I'm going to take this and I'm going to plug it in to the second line, into the other line. So I'm going to plug in this for this y value. So if we do that, we'll have 3x minus 2y equals 7. Let's rewrite the line. And then we'll have 3x minus 2, 3 minus 2x over 3 equals 7, like that. And now we have an equation in terms of one variable in terms of the x. So to solve for the x, what I'm going to do, distribute this negative 2 inside the bracket. So we'll have 3x. Negative 2 times 3 gives us negative 6. And then negative 2 times negative 2x gives us positive 4x. And that's still going to be over 3 because this negative 2 is like over 1. So negative 2 times negative 2x gives us positive 4x. 1 times 3 gives us 3. And then this here is still going to be 7. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep all the x's on one side, bring all the numbers to the other. So negative 6 I'm going to bring over. 7 plus 6 gives us 13. And then I'm going to have 3x plus 4x over 3, like that. And then I'm going to combine these into 1. This 3 is like over 1. So if I multiply this by 3, multiply this by 3 to get a common denominator, I'll have 9x over 3 plus 4x over 3 equals 13. So notice this here would end up being 13x over 3 equals 13, like that. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to erase all this, give myself some room. So if I rewrite this over here, 13x over 3 equals 13. This 13 I could put over 1, and then to solve for this x, notice we can cross multiply here. So 1 times 13x gives us 13x, 3 times 13 gives us 39, and then notice we could divide both sides by 13. So x would end up equaling 3. Another way we could have went about this is to split up the fraction. This way is a little bit more complex. So we could split up the fraction or uh, separate the fraction from the x. And then we could divide both sides by 13 over 3. And we would divide this 13 by 13 over 3. So these would cancel out. And this is like 13 over 1 divided by 13 over 3, which is like 13 over 1 times 3 over 13. Right? When you're dividing by a fraction, it's like multiplying by the reciprocal of it. So that would be 39 over 13. This would be x, we'd still have an x here, and then x would be 3. So that's maybe a more complex way of going about it. Or you could just combine them into one term and cross 
multiply. So whichever way you do it, x is equal to 3. And then we could solve for the y value. Um, we could plug it in. We could plug in this x value anywhere, really, and then isolate for y. Let's just do it over here. So we'll have uh, y equals 3 minus 2 times 3, the x value, and plugging in there over 3. Notice these 3s would cancel out. Or you could have 2 times 3, which is 6. 6 divided by 3 gives us 2. So whichever way you do it, 2 is left there. y equals 3 minus 2. y is equal to 1. Right, so the point at which these two lines intersect is 3 and 1. And then if we were to do a check on it, we would take the original lines, plug in the solution, and we would just make sure that the left side equals the right side. So notice here, 6 plus 3, that would give us, um, or yeah, let's just write out, that would give us 9, which equals 9. So left side equals right side here, that's all good. The other line, 3x minus 2y equals 7. We'll have 3 times 3 minus 2 times 1. 3 times 3 is 9, 2 times 1 is 2. 9 minus 2 gives us 7. So notice here, left side equals right side as well. So we verified it with both lines, 3 and 1, that is the answer.